Welcome to our part two about ML projects to help you in machine learning. This will, this is uh, towards, geared more towards the people who want to take it to the intermediate stage. So just a few prereqs before we, to make the most of this video. This is this going to be borrowing a lot of the concepts of the part one, which is for uh, beginner entry level people. And it's going to use a lot of the, it's going to kind of extend from that project on but you don't need to have necessarily watched that video. What you need to have from that video, or if you're watching this video to be able to build this project, what you need to have at this stage is an end-to-end -end machine learning project that takes unclean real world data, does the cleaning and pre-processing on it, and can run simple models plus, uh, like train a simple model and uh, do certain uh, performance evaluations on it. That is the bare minimum that you have to have running before to really make the most of this video. And uh, if you haven't seen that video, or if it, you've forgotten why we're taking real world unclean data and not data sets from Kaggle, etc., it's because a lot of machine learning is really more geared towards the data engineering and the data set building, etc. So uh, as opposed to more the deep learning and model evaluation and building all these funky architectures that you often see in uh, people focus on so this way uh, so working with real world data is a great way to really build up your competence and skills and actually appeal to a lot of uh, employers and just your, uh, develop your own skills so we're, we're not we have an end-to-end -end project running but now we're going to kind of uh, build on this and how are we going to build on this we first have all the steps of the machine learning pipeline and we're somewhat familiar with them that, that's what the basic version was supposed to do. In this iteration, we will be focusing on some of the important aspects that will often show up with machine learning projects that you won't see when you do ML projects or ML competitions or even just uh, look at ML tutorials online. These will include things like uh, looking at um, combining different data sources to com publish our data set and actually do looking at model retraining protocols and when we want to do that which is all things you won't normally typically see in a, tr a traditional machine learning uh, project. And uh, this is actually, especially the first bit, which is actually combining multiple sources is very important. And that's something that you will be doing a lot of. So here's an example where, you know, you're taking multiple data sets and you're kind of combining features from them or you're extracting features from them and engineering certain new features. So multi-source data sets are very common. In fact, uh, my current work with Four Optics, we're, we're analyzing supplier risk and we're looking at supplier behavior to be able to quantify the risk. And one of the areas that we need to focus on supplier risk is even if the supply itself is good, if they're in a very unstable region, say like the Middle East or say like China, where, where there's a lot of government instability, then you want to quantify that in your metric as opposed to a more stable region like Western Europe or like the United States. So we actually look at a whole bunch of different uh, sources and data collections to develop just the external risk metric. We have, you know, we look at a lot more than just the external risk. We look at their own behavior. We look at deviations. We look at reviews, etc. But we are, but you know, just a very, uh, just external itself is reliant on a lot of data sets. And here you can see, you know, this is just the historical aspect of the external data set. So this is a sub part of a sub part. And even there, you know, we're trying to quantify economic stability. We're trying to quantify general historic indicate economic indicators, which we, we get through a bunch of different indices, you know, all in different areas. We're trying to also quantify the political stability. And this is just the historical aspect. Remember, so just even our external factors is much, much bigger than just this. So you, you can see why, how challenging it might be to start building up data sets and uh, combine multiple sources. When I was working with Johns Hopkins, uh, the guy I was working with, Zabir, who supervised me, it, he had actually done this for, and it took him a whole year in order to combine multiple data sources into a coherent data set. So, and working with uh, actually building up multi-source data sets will be really, really helpful to you because you'll gain a lot of skills. You'll learn to do SQL queries or any other kind of querying, combining, merging tables. You know, you'll learn about things like Cartesian products and other uh, joins. All of these are very important steps in a data engineer or a machine learning pipeline person. Remember, it's so much more than just building up funky models. And that's unfortunately what Kaggle or what a lot of videos train you to think of that that's all machine learning is. But 
real life machine learning is so much more and it's very little actual learning and a lot more to do with building your data sets and uh, controlling for all of these factors so here yeah, feel free to pause to take a look and you know once we've built up our once we've built up multi model source data sets and we we're retraining our uh, we have a model that's running and able to print coherent results we we actually want to deploy this model and to learn how to deploy this model make sure you've hit the like button on this video if this has been helpful to you so far to help promote this video to other people and to subscribe but and make sure you subscribe so that you're always uh, updated with new videos but back to this uh, bar, uh, in machine learning very rarely will you actually have local hosted models like very rarely will you have m machine learning models that run on your laptop most likely it's going to be on a cloud and then it's going to be interacting with real world data very consistently think of facebook you know it's not running on some machine learning guys engineer uh, laptop it's running on their servers or any of the big ml techs even with core optics the goal is we do actually push the models out to uh, our cloud based service which we then use for other things so you uh, you always want to make sure that your model is compatible with uh, deployment and you want to make sure that you're taking in the data that way you're you're you want to build like a api driven front end where you can, you're actually getting the new data and you're messing uh, you're doing the predictions on the back end whatever and you know this will give you very very strong uh, engineering and just overall model building and deployment skills which is very important and if you can't really afford to put it on the cloud because you're working but for yourself just put it just local hosted but what's important is you get the right steps you know you could get a node job, a server running and do all of that. that that's not an issue but what's important is that you deploy it as a cloud based service even if it's local hosted just so that you have you build up your competence in that area and once we have this running we do the final step of our pro procedure which is we are going to constantly scrape for new data and we're going to be monitoring our model performance so there's two kinds of monitoring we want to do one is that we take out in our raw data we keep feeding it to the models and we keep seeing how well it's performing we might even do a few manual sampling just so that we know for example when i was working with icic bank once we have our model running for a loan prediction or whatever we always have the we we might see okay these are the new cl uh, clients and they we weren't able to convert them into a you know uh, we weren't able to sell a loan to them even though the model said this was this was what it w we should be able to convert them so we feed that information back into the data set so it can retrain and maybe once you start getting a certain per percentage wrong you're, you're like okay i'm going to retrain my model alternatively and this is a lot more common what you do is you start looking at your data distributions so here, for example, you can see that there's a feature and the same feature has different distributions in 2019 and 2021. And that's going to be very common because remember, real life, a lot of things will change. Uh, think of the cell phone you're using. You're probably using the cell phone, a different cell phone, or you're looking at different YouTube videos in 2019 than in 2021. So in that context, uh, you know, your behavior is changing and you want your models to be able to at least recognize that my different features are developing different kinds of distributions and once the distribution gets far enough from what my original data distribution was i want to retrain my model so that it's able to adapt to the new changes and uh, you know you always want to look at multiple metrics it's not just one metric multiple metrics will give you a much better hint of when you want to retrain how you want to retrain how quickly you want to retrain but think about this to the you know till now i haven't mentioned doing any funky deep learning any of that we're not going to touch that yet you, what have we actually touched on we have touched on creating a multi-source data set we I, we have touched on taking that multi-source data set running simply so even very simple models like random forest or logistic regressions these are you'll use them a lot in practice so there's nothing wrong with using deploying them you could deploy like an ensemble of them and then we take this and we put this on the cloud or we local host it but we may we uh, like use some apis to make sure that we can query inputs and we make sure that we're we, we're monitoring for new training data if uh, going back to the previous video and using an example from there maybe you, if you were doing the twitter scraping twitter and amazon scraping for reviews and sentiment 
you keep rescraping to see how much sentiment is changing to see okay is there some kind of a recency bias then you might start working in the math to be like okay we want to weigh the re more recent data samples more heavily and how do we do that you see how many factors there are to consider even before we try to get very fancy with our deep learning and that's again what i want to stress to you in machine learning that machine learning is so much more than machine learning models it's how you handle your data it's what you do with it it's how you even decide to approach certain problems and that can dramatically change your results but that's about it for this video thanks for watching if you if you would like to support me going further make sure you uh, you connect with me uh, on the with the different social media links they will be in the next slide and in the video description below uh, be talking to people helps me see what uh, you know areas they're interested in helps me fine tune my videos with better feedback etc etc be please share this uh, content or the slide deck with more people more people see this helps me out a lot we can help a lot more as mentioned feedback is really helpful if you'd like to support me monetarily uh, then my venmo and paypal uh, links are there it's not necessary but it's, it's not strictly required but it would be it helps a lot and would be greatly appreciated and as mentioned these are all my links that you can re use to reach out to me if you want a free stock from robin hood make sure you use my link it's a it's literally free money there's no risk to you they, they don't require a down payment to use not you if you can use it not using it is just uh, losing out on free money uh, but that's about it thank you for watching and make sure you do your uh, make, make sure you take the lessons from this ml model and use it in yourself peace